Okay, in this video we are going to talk about domains of compositions of functions. It's something people sometimes find challenging, but it's really not that bad. So we're just going to walk through an example, um, and if you follow the example, you'll be able to do this kind of problem pretty easily. So let's see the problem. Uh, we have f of x is 1 over x plus 5. So you'll notice there I made the x's purple. Um, I'm going to try to color code on the way through. Um, g of x, so different color x because it's kind of a different x, um, is equal to 1 over uh, x squared plus 3x plus 2. And then we're going to find the domain of f of g of x. Okay, so to get started with this, the first thing we do is for that inner function, g of x, we're going to find its domain. So step one is going to be to find the domain of the inner function, which is g of x in this case. So g of x is 1 over, I'm just going to factor this denominator. So I get x plus 2 and x plus 1. So it's a rational function. It exists everywhere except where the denominator is 0. So at this point, I can say the domain of g of x is uh, x is an element of the reals, but x cannot be negative 2, and x cannot be negative 1. All right, so that's the domain of g of x. And it's important to realize that that right there is the biggest possible domain that f of g of x could have. So when we write the domain of f of g of x, we're going to start with x is an element of the reals, x is not negative 2, x is not negative 1. Um, and then from there, we might actually limit the domain even more, but it can't get bigger. So the next step is we got to look at f of x. So we're going to find the domain of f of x. So to do that, again, it's a rational function. So f of x is just 1 over x plus 5. And that means the domain of f of x is going to be x is an element of the reals. But it's a different x. That's why I'm using a different color. So x can't be negative 5. So here's the key step. That x can't be negative 5 right there. What we need to do is we need to make sure that g of x will never produce a negative 5. Because if g of x produces a negative 5, we're going to try to substitute negative 5 into f of x, and then f of x can't deal with it. So we need to make sure that never happens. The way we do that is we figure out what makes g of x equal negative 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve this. We're going to solve g of x equals negative 5. Um, and that comes down to this equation. So 1 over x plus 2 times x plus 1 equals negative 5. So I obviously need a new page, so I'm going to copy this over and then do some algebra. So we have this. So we want to solve that. So all I've done so far is copy it over, and then I cross multiplied to bring the, uh, the x plus 2, x plus 1 over. And then I also expanded x plus 2 times x plus 1. So I have 1 is equal to negative 5 times the quantity x squared plus 3x plus 2. And from here, I'm going to kind of uh, distribute and move things, and we'll see as we go. So I'm just going to distribute here, move everything to the same side. So I'm going to move it all to the right, get a positive coefficient on x squared. Just makes it easier to deal with. So we have this. Uh, this looks like something that definitely doesn't factor. So I'm just going to use a quadratic formula. So it's going to be x is the opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we get that. I'm going to simplify. So 15 squared is 225, and 4 times 55 is 220. So it's 225 minus uh, 220. So in that radical is actually just 5. So we have this. OK. And so I like to break this apart into two things. So I'm going to say x is negative 15 plus radical 5 over 10, or x is negative 15 minus radical 5 over 10. So these are the values that make g of x equal negative 5. And since they make g of x equal negative 5, we need to exclude those values, specifically because they produce a um, negative 5. And f of x just simply cannot use that. So we're going to go and add these as restrictions to our domain as well. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to summarize on the next page, basically like every step I went through. So this is the original problem. The first thing that we did was we found the domain of g of x. And when we found that, we got x is an element of the reals, x is not negative 2, x is not negative 1. That's the biggest we could possibly get for our domain. Then we go searching for more exclusions. 
We do that by first finding the domain of f of x, which is the outer function. So we find the domain of f of x. We found that that was x is an element of the reals. x is not negative 5. So now what we need to do was make sure that g of x never gives us a negative 5. So we solve g of x equals negative 5, and that's going to find more exclusions. It's possible g of x is never equal to negative 5, and there's no problem. Um, it's possible that there are like 10 values of x that make g of x equal negative 5, and those would just all be exclusions. When we did it in this case, we just got um, these two values from the quadratic formula. And then the final answer that we're looking for, so the domain of f of g of x, is going to be first the domain of g of x. So that we found was x is an element of the reals, x is not negative 2, x is not negative 1. So those will never work out. And then uh, we also had to subtract any of the additional exclusions. So additional exclusions we found were those other two x values. So we also put in x is not negative 15 plus radical 5 over 10, and x is not negative 15 minus radical 5 over 10. And that's the whole thing. All right, so if you follow those steps, you'll be successful with these problems. Don't be intimidated by it, although it looks like a lot of work. It's not really that bad. Um, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.